Good afternoon and welcome to this edition of the Swine Product Spotlight presented by the Iowa Pork Producers Association. I'm Cindy Cunningham and I'll be your host for these spotlights today and tomorrow. We're so glad you've joined us today. As you can see, the 49th Annual Iowa Pork Congress looks a bit different this year as we've had to limit our in-person events and move the educational seminars and Iowa Pork Foundation auction to a virtual format. While the shift in events is a disappointment, the IPPA Board of Directors used the core We Care values to make the decision to keep the whole community safer as the nation works through this coronavirus epidemic. Even with these changes, you can still connect with vendors, attend seminars, and much more. One of the important aspects of the Iowa Pork Congress is the trade show, and it gives producers an opportunity to talk to a variety of vendors and kick some tires. We will be doing that this afternoon through the Swine Product Spotlight right here on this webinar and again tomorrow at 9.30 and 2.30. If you're interested in the other seminars, the auction, or more, just log on to the Iowa Pork website at www.iowapork.org for a complete schedule and to register. And be sure to follow along on social media. Our hashtag is Iowa Pork Congress 2021. Again, that hashtag is Iowa Pork Congress 2021. During our time today here on this Swine Product Spotlight, our goal is to showcase companies and their products, bringing to you the latest in swine products, technology, and innovation. These are some of the highlights of what you would have seen during the trade show. This is the second in our four spotlights. So if you missed one or want to watch one again, simply log on to view them at iowapork.org or at the Swinecast website at swinecast.com. Again, those websites, iowapork.org or swinecast.com. Our first order of business today is about the technology we're using. To make this easy for all who have joined us, we've taken care of some of the details for you. You're already in a listen-only mode, which means we've muted your microphones for you. Chances are you will have some questions for a specific company. Let me say we welcome those questions for all of our companies. And what we'd like you to do is just type them in the QA box at the bottom of the Zoom window, and I'll be sure that each speaker and each representative from companies takes some time to answer those questions. I'm extremely excited about the folks that we will have on during this session and that you'll have the opportunity to meet. We've got uh, representatives from AP, Innovational Water Solutions, and GenePro. We'll spend about 10 minutes with each company. We've got a lot of ground to cover this afternoon, so let's get started. Our first guest today is AP. AP has a full line of feed storage and delivery systems, feeders, ventilation, and environmental controls. Mark Hayden is the director of Swine Sales and the Sioux City Warehouse, and he joins us to talk a little bit about the AP load cells. Hello everyone, this is Mark Hayden with AP, and today we'll be discussing what we have to offer for feed monitoring and management systems. AP has over 20 years of experience in measuring and reporting feed inventories. And so today we kind of want to do a quick overview of the different uh, products that we have available. At the heart of our feed management system is the load bar assembly. Um, load cells have been around for many, many years and are definitely a proven method of accurately monitoring the weight of the feed in the bin. When we started our development process about 25 years ago, we looked at a lot of different potential solutions, and a lot of those relied on the feed leaving the bin in a uniform manner, and we didn't need very much time to realize that that was not going to work very well. Feed, as it flows out of bins at sites, comes out very unpredictably and very unevenly. So we circled back around to the load cell design. In the picture, you'll see the load cell that we've had for a number of years. It is a very effective tool. No matter how the feed flows out of the bin, we're still measuring the weight and gives us a very accurate picture. And through our years of development and refining the product, we will have a load cell coming out this spring that will be accurate to about a 1% plus or minus accuracy level. And also a new feature that we'll have this spring is a pre-calibrated load cell, which means that we no longer have to deliver a full bin of feed to the site to do a full calibration. 
the bars will be pre-calibrated and eliminates that very cumbersome task of having someone at the site, having the feed ticket, having to fill the bin completely. So that is a huge technological advance that we will be coming out with this spring. The system can be adapted to almost any bin that's out there. We use the existing anchor, so if you're doing a retrofit or a new site, either way it adapts very easily. When the load cells are installed, we're only raising the feed line anywhere from three to four inches, so it has very minimal impact on the installation at the site. Now I just kind of want to go through some of the components and the options with the system. And this is for our feed link system. We'll talk about connecting the load cells to edge at the end of the presentation. So for now, these next items are gonna be all of what's incorporated into our feed link system, which is a package that can be put on a new site, but it also is a great retrofit. No matter the type of ventilation, the controls that you have, these components can be added to the site and give you real-time data and analytics from any production site that's out there. So here's what the display unit looks like. We can mount these on the bin leg or you can mount them inside the building. A lot of people want to have them in office. And with the feed link system, we can mount remotely up to 2,000 feet from the bin. If we're going to measure the feed inventory, it's relatively inexpensive and, and it's in a big demand for also knowing what the temp and the water consumption is doing at the site. This box can be added to any existing facility. We run new temp probes into the room. We tie into a lot of times the existing water meters. I mean, it does require having a network master to tie all this information together. And we'll talk about that in an upcoming slide. If a person wants to tie their feed systems into the system, that's easily done. We can add our IR sensor into the network. If you use our IR2, which is virtually the same, as our traditional IR sensor. And if you have our traditional IR sensors, you can be upgraded by simply adding a new lid and it can put it on the network. And this will allow you to get emails and text notifications about, you know, if there's an issue with the feed line or if it's run too long or if it happens to be an alarm. Some of the other components that we have available are wireless modules. Some sites are not designed or adaptable to trenching. Maybe we have sites across the road from each other, across the site. And if we have those situations, we can easily add um, RF modules that will let us send the information up to a mile as long as we have direct line of sight. Here is a look at the Network Master 2. This is the data collection device that sits at the site. We do uh, require an internet connection where we can plug into the Network Master 2 and that allows all the data to be sent to a cloud and that will give you all of the emails, text, and reporting features that we're going to look at here next. There is an annual fee that goes with, with the analytics. Uh, however, it's very affordable, um, very minimal cost per pig. We do have an app if you put in the Network Master Everyone has an app for almost everything, so does FeedLink, but it will allow you from any smart device, a phone or a tablet, to be able to pull up all the information in regard to feed, water, temp at your site. Another option of the system is to have the daily status reports. You can see a quick look here of what a report looks like. This is on a typical double wide finisher. We have the inventory for all the bins, their consumption history. We project the empty date and time of the bins. We're also keeping track of high low temps, water, and the feed line usage. So in a quick snapshot, you have a really good idea of what's going on at the site. If you prefer a uh, graphical view, there's a hyperlink right on your daily status report. Just kind of want to show some of the different graphs that uh, are representative of what we're seeing at the site. Here happens to be a feed outage, and you can see how the consumption was increasing. We had an out of feed event and you can see the disruption caused in relation to that. Here is a water spill. So, you know, if you don't happen to catch it on a difference or different people like to view things differently, sometimes graphs are the, are the best way. And here is very evident that we had a water spill event. Luckily, they got on it very quickly and were able to take care of the situation and not put excess water in the pit. Here's a graph that shows where a group of pigs was, was sick during the turn. You can see everything was rolling along just fine. Then the pigs got a little sick, went off water a little, a little more, and then a lot. And 
by catching this early on, hopefully we could medicate these pigs and avoid that major disruption in um, the pigs. As I mentioned before, we do have the EDGE compatibility. All of these features for the most part are also available through EDGE, but some people do not want the charts and graphs. So without any additional fee, you can get real-time inventory, feed consumption information, and of course you have your temp and water information that you would always have through an EDGE system. But we do offer the analytics through edge.com. So that is another great option. That's all the slides that we had today. We really appreciate your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Thank you. Mark, that's some great information. It sounds like a, a really exciting product that you've got there. We do have some questions coming in from producers, but producers, this is your time to send those questions in to us. We'll make sure that Mark answers those. Just hit the QA box at the bottom of the Zoom screen there and, and shoot us your question. Uh, Mark, one of the questions that we have is, what does it take to set up the load cell assemblies, like time, resources? Well, the installation is fairly simple. Um, I mean, I've done it myself, so that should tell people that know me that it isn't very really hard, but um, you know, it's just minimal assembly of the load cell itself, uh, bolting it to the bin leg, using the existing anchors that are there for the bins. Um, and then it's just a lot of wiring, tying the, the load cells to that uh, display or a junction box and then routing it into the building. So installation is, is very easy and not complicated at all. Mark, you talked about the internet connection there at those sites. How much bandwidth is needed for that internet connection? It's very, very little. I mean, any basic internet service will cover what we need for this system. Great. What about maintenance of um, those systems? What kind of maintenance is required to, for upkeep? If the system is installed properly to begin with, and if the site conditions are good, which means there's not a bunch of feed laying on the bin pads, there is virtually no maintenance with these systems over time. It's just making sure the wires are uh, not blowing around in the wind and, and rubbing on something sharp and making sure there's not a bunch of uh, critters that want to chew on the wires, but no maintenance whatsoever if everything's uh, you know maintained well at the site. Actually here in Iowa with the weather events that we have this time of year and the unique weather that we have throughout the entire year, how does weather impact this system? Does it have any impact at all? Well, you're right. The weather in this neck of the woods, which I'm in Iowa here, but it, uh, it can be pretty severe in the wintertime. And we knew that going into our design process. And uh, we actually, through our testing, we, we froze the bars to like 40 below and and you know we did all kinds of different testing. So um, we were well aware of the conditions they were in. We've had the load cells out for just shy of 20 years now, and, and they've really proven to be uh, almost not affected at all with the weather conditions. One more quick question, Mark. How do producers reach you? The best way to learn about these products and all the AP products would be to go to our website, which is automatedproduction.com. Uh, there you'll find brochures, manuals, uh, training videos. If you'd, if you'd rather speak to someone in person, I'd recommend calling our Sioux City office. That number is 712-239-1011. Thanks, Mark. Mark Hayden, we really appreciate you being with us today. And as always, we appreciate your support of our producers, Iowa Pork Congress, and being an Iowa Pork Alliance member. We'll talk more with AP again later in this hour. But for now, we're going to move on to our next spotlight, which is Innovational Water Solutions. Innovational Water Solutions, or IWS, specializes in complete facility water management. And with us today, Greg Meyer, the president and CEO of Innovational Water Solutions, he has some information to share. Hi, I'm Greg Meyer, president and CEO of Innovational Water Solutions. Today, we're going to talk a little bit what water matters in agriculture. What we've developed is a product that is very, very effective in bacteria control. Water Matters is our subject since about a year ago when all of the bacteria and viruses in the world starting to become more and more prevalent, not only in buildings, but in agriculture. One of the things water 
is in animal health, it's one of the most important factors of producing high quality animals. And what we do is we specialize in water that's disinfecting all of the bacterias in the ag industry that animals suffer with every day. Over the last 20 years, our combined years of experience in bacteria control with our staff has developed a product called Ziox. And with this product, we've been able to have very, very good success, not only across North America, but in other parts of the world as well. What I want to do now is I want to introduce you to Ziox. We were able to really put a product out in the marketplace that is user-friendly, but very, very effective on controlling bacteria. Some of the water sources is reservoirs and ponds, boreholes, water storage tanks, main waters, and rainwater harvest. Those are some of the more popular sources that people utilize today for feeding their livestock. With Ziox, we put a dosing system in your facility. And what that dosing system does is it controls bacteria and it eradicates the biofilm in the piping. The biofilm in the piping is where all the bugs live. So what we want to do is we want to remove those bugs. We want to clean those pipes and we want to make that water as high quality as possible for all of the animals that are consuming it. Some of the bacteria that you may be most knowledgeable on is E. coli, Pseudonomus, TBCs, coliforms, and Salmonella, just to name a few. After a lot of case studies, a lot of the benefit from our Ziox improved uh, FCR, food consumption rates. They've had increased growth rates. They've had reduction in scour. The mortality dropping way down. Improvement in batch evenness, improved gut health, reduction in days to market, and it's safe to use in water medication. We do recommend water system gets turned off prior to medicating, and then we allow a certain time for that to turn back on. Our product is non-corrosive to any pipe work, and it's proven with all of our feeding production methods. Those are just a few of the benefits that our clients around the world have experienced. If you look at a picture of a pipe in one of your facilities that has experienced heavy biofilm, when we start out, you can look at that biofilm and it's almost clogging the pipe. The bugs live in the walls of that biofilm and what our product does penetrates those walls and it starts to break down and it starts to kill. As it kills, it releases the biofilm from the piping walls and it actually then starts to flush away. One of the most common things people ask is, where is it going? Well, it's going out of the system. We're flushing it through the piping until we have good clear pipes and good clean water. Right now I've got a farm performance study that we've done on two sites. So we'd have a little bit of comparison of what untreated water is versus treated water. When we tested the water prior to, we had a lot of biofilm and we had a lot of bacteria. From the first farm that we studied, it was about a thousand pigs. Water source was through borehole. We had a reduction on days on the farm by 7%. We had an improvement in daily weight gain by 14% and an improvement in food consumption rate of 7%. Those are pretty significant numbers when you look at over a time frame when this is, was only on one batch. You can see the numbers on farm two, same thing. It was a smaller batch of pig. Uh, the water source was from a water main. We had reduction in days on farm. We had an improvement in daily weight gain and again, an improvement in the food consumption. All this data was from AQ&M, one of our customers overseas. Our product usually gets compared to what some people are either using bromine or chlorine. Our product is pH neutral. So when we look at the efficacy chart of our product, we wanna look at where's the most effective and how long is it gonna last? As you can see on the active bio side, our efficacy on Ziox maintains at 100%, way past the pH level of nine and a half, where bromine and chlorine are dropping off dramatically when, as soon as the pH starts to get 
pipe. With that benefit, you're not having to use multiple products to maintain your pH. That's our presentation for the day. It gives you some highlights of what Ziox is about and what IWS can help achieve if you allow us to come in and help you with your water management needs. Thank you. Craig, that's some great information and, and really interesting. It, it brings up some questions for me, but I see we've also got a producer question as well. And for those of you on the line with us, just type those questions into the QA box and we'll make sure that, uh, that Greg gets those answered for us. So the first question that we have from a producer is what kind of testing should we do to know if we need to use your product? Well, what we'd like to do, Cindy, is we, we usually send out water bottles. Uh, they can sample them collect the samples, send them into our warehouse. One of our engineers can pick them up. And then what we'll do is we'll do a full analytical study on their water. So we can look at seeing what bacteria is in there, seeing what <clears throat> the issues are, and then kind of addressing it accordingly, depending on what we find. Great, so let's talk about the animals uh, in the barn. So can this product be used on animals of all ages? It can, and we recommend that. So we have starting from sows all the way from wean to finish, um, any animal that is consuming water, because what our system does, Cindy, is actually monitors the flow. So it's we're uh, treating and dosing the water according to how much it is. So we're not gonna overfeed or underfeed, depending on the age or the size of the animal. And can those animals, can those pigs be in the barns uh, when you're installing this system? They can, yeah. So um, we always recommend us going in and taking a look when the barns are empty, but most of our systems, especially on cell facilities, um, the animals can be in there. We can, we're not in the barn itself. We're right at the water main we're putting in our system and we're not gonna bother. We're not gonna break any biosecurity. Um, so they are very, very uh, self-sufficient as far as the animals staying in the barns while we um, install the systems. Well, let's talk a little bit more about the install. And I assume that you do both the service and the install for the systems throughout their lifespan? We do. So we'll go out to a facility and we'll actually, we'll survey it. Um, Obviously, the, uh, the farms know their systems better than we do, so we get a lot of input from them during a survey. And then we, put, we install the system and we're managing it. We'll, um, if there's a facility that needs some special testing on it, we'll set up a testing program. So for the most part, we're very hands-on. We work a lot with the producers. And speaking of producers, just drop us your questions in the QA box. We've got another producer question here, uh, Greg, and it says, will this product affect my cleaning protocols? Products I use, will they continue to work at their max effectiveness? They will, and actually it'll enhance them uh, because for the bacteria that our products are going to be addressing, their products may or may not. So it will definitely benefit and enhance the products that they're working with. So let's say we want to get started with your product. How do we start the process? You can reach out to us. You can contact us on our website at iwatergroup-us.com or you can give us a call at our headquarters in Minnesota at 763-208-6506. Greg, we really appreciate you spending some time with us today. Greg Meyer, the president and CEO of Innovational Water Solutions Incorporated. And we really appreciate also that IWS is uh, as, as active as they are in supporting our producers here in Iowa and the Iowa Pork Congress, as well as uh, your being part of the Iowa Pork Alliance. We really appreciate that. Greg, thanks for all that you do for the producers in our state. Thanks, Cindy. And now back again with us is AP. Welcome back to our spotlight. We know that AP will be in all of our spotlights and we really appreciate that. As we learned earlier in this show, AP has a full line of feed storage and delivery systems, feeders, ventilation, and environmental controls. AP and its dealers are on your team finding solutions that fit any swine production operation. 
Mark Oberreiter joins us. Mark is the Senior Technician of Technical Support with AP, and he has some information to share with us about the AP Commander Fan. The Commander Fan is the latest line of fans offered by AP. And why should someone choose the Commander Fan? First of all, they have a very high output in both low and high static pressure situations. The 54-inch fan with the PVC shutter has a rated capacity of 33,900 CFM at a, a 0.05 static pressure, and it still delivers 27,100 CFM at a 0.3 static pressure. The 36-inch fan with the PVC shutter is rated for 16,650 CFM at a 0.05, and it still delivers 13,770 at a 0.3 static pressure. Another great advantage is that the fan can vary an output using a ventilation control. The 54-inch fan with the PVC shutter has a range of output from 18,800 all the way up to its maximum of 33,900, and the 36-inch fan can vary its output from around 7,000 up to 16,650. Another great advantage is its high efficiency. With all the commander fans, their efficiency increases as they slow down. The 54 inch fan has an efficiency all the way up to 39 CFM per watt, and the 36 inch fan up to 37 CFM per watt. The last advantage is the very low maintenance it offers. Since it's a direct drive fan, there are no belts to tighten. There are no pulleys to maintain or bearings to grease. The features for this fan, first of all, is the motor. The motor is a, it's a high performance permanent magnet electric motor. It runs cool to the touch and it supplies a constant torque to the throttle. The drive, which is located near the fan on the wall, is, is a robust. Uh, control with an IP66 rating. And the main power and the control signal from the main ventilation control come into this drive and it operates the fan at the full speed. It can be programmed several ways. You can use an optic stick that you plug into the drive to download that program right to the drive. You can also use a smartphone with an app to make changes to the settings and then download that program to the drive through that optic stick. We can also program the drive with its built-in user interface. The prop for the fans is a 54-inch fan. It's a, it's a reinforced prop uh, made of all non-corrosive materials. And the 36-inch fan has an aluminum hub with composite blades made of also all non-corrosive materials. There's many options with the Commander fans. First of all, there's a 54 and 36 inch model. The, the power coming to the drive for the fan can either be a single or a three phase power. The, the signal coming from your control can either be a zero to 10 or 10 to zero. Uh, it uses that as an input to the drive for different situations. The shutter for the fan can either be made of PVC or it can be a roll seal type shutter. And the discharge cone can either be a fiberglass or a poly material. If you'd like more information about our Commander fans, you can contact me, Mark Oberlander, at 712-239-1011, or you can call an AP representative in your area. Thank you. Mark, great information about Commander fans. Wow, there that's a that's an impressive set of of information and a real tool for our producers on their farms. I've got some questions and I think that probably our producers have some questions as well. And if you've got a question for Mark and the AP team, go ahead and just uh, add that to the QA box at the bottom of the Zoom page. And we've got some time for Mark to answer those questions. Mark, it looks like our first question coming in from a producer says, how often should the fans be reviewed and what is the maintenance schedule? should the fans be reviewed um yeah good question i guess uh um whatever you think there could possibly be an issue um 
you know, we, we do have an AP service available um, to be able to go out to the sites and to look at your ventilation. Um, so if you want to contact us, we can set something up in that way. But um, I guess anytime you think there might be a question or if you're changing the purpose of the building for sure, or if it's got uh, quite a few years of age, it will be a good time to take a look at things. Okay, sounds good. Mark, let's, these commander fans, I'm really intrigued by this. Um, tell me, would they be a good fit in any swine building or are they more specific to a certain type of, of facility? A good question. They can be used almost any swine building where you use traditional fans, but there are a few examples that I could um, talk about where they really shine. Um, the first example is where um, you usually have like filters involved in your system to where you're being very restricted for that airflow. It's because these fans, they work at very, uh, work very good at higher static pressures. So it's a good use uh, of the commander fan, um, like sal units where you're filtering that air. Um, another good example is um, when you have a maybe traditional finisher where you have some small fans, intermediate and large fans, well, this 54 um, commander could take the place of an intermediate fan and also um, you know, do good at a big fan. So that way you could reduce the number of fans you have um, and give a nice uniform increase in that airflow. So there's a, just a couple of examples, but it can be used in most, most applications where you're trying to reduce the, the amount of maintenance or increase the efficiency of your barn. It'd be great, a great solution for that. And actually, we have a producer question uh, who wants to know if these fans can also be used in poultry barns. I'm sure. I, I don't know why you could. Um, just any place you're trying to, to, to move a lot of air efficiently um, would be a good application as well. And as we think about that a lot of air efficiently, I think the next question ties into that from a producer. Is there a good rule of thumb for the commander fan um, capacity or quantity? versus the facility square footage? Capacity versus square footage. Um, I guess you try to answer that, but I would encourage, you know, with, with any um, barn that you have that you're trying to design the ventilation for, uh, that is another one of my uh, specialties. So if you'd like to contact me and, and we can talk about your project and, and go through all the options of, of what, uh, yeah, the design should look like and, and what options we have for you for fans. Yeah, absolutely. I, I have a question about discharge cones. Um, where, should, where should you consider each type? And, and tell me a little bit more about the options that are available there. Well, so the two main options we have is, for, is a fiberglass material and a poly material. And our tried and true um, option is, is the fiberglass. Um, for any application um, that, especially where snow is a possibility that's gonna slide off the roof, and possibly come in contact with that discharge cone, we highly recommend using um, the fiberglass option. But in, in applications where you still want to get that efficiency um, with that discharge cone, but you don't have the worry of the snow um, coming off of the roof, then the poly is a little more economical. Okay, but I bet, I bet you're willing to come out and work with our producers and help them to get just the right fit for their own barns? Oh, sure, yeah. Just, uh, just contact and we will try to help you in any way we can, whether it be over the phone or if uh, need be, um, you know, possibly come out and, and take a look at things as well, so. Great, and how can our producers reach out to you, Mark? Yeah, as far as to learn more about the Commander Fan, um, best way is our website at automatedproduction.com, but also um, I, I work in our Sioux City office and the main line there is 712-239. 1011. Give us that number one more time in case people were jotting it down quickly. Yes, yeah, 712 239 1011. Great, Mark. Well, Mark Oberreiter, we really appreciate you being with us today and talking with us about the Commander fan from AP. And as always, we appreciate your support of our producers, um, the Iowa Pork Congress, and you being an Iowa Pork Alliance member, very important to our state. We look forward to talking with the AP team during our shows tomorrow as well. 
Our next guest is Chris Landsman. Chris is with GenePro, a global reproductive technology company specializing in the engineering, manufacturing, sales, and service of the most innovative swine reproductive supplies. Chris has some information for us now. Hello, my name is Chris Landsman and I am the regional sales rep for GenePro. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you guys about our Intellimate bulk dose insemination gun. We are a global reproductive company that specializes in the engineering, manufacturing, sales, and service of the reproductive supplies. We specialize only in the swine industry. We have products for the boar studs as well all the way through to the sow farms, which includes semen extenders, which are made directly here in the USA. We have packaging machines, semen evaluation systems, dummies, semen bags, and bulk bags as well as catheters, ultrasound machines, and semen storage units. We are based out in Madison, Wisconsin, and we do have our quality management system, which meets the ISO standards. We're also a subsidiary of a company called Genes Diffusion, which is based in France. Our Intellimate bulk dose insemination system, what exactly is it? It is a revolutionary tool to use in bulk dose insemination. What's nice about it is with this system, you don't have to worry about any inconsistent dosages. It was designed for operator use, reliability, and accuracy. And one of the really neat things about this tool is that it was developed by breeders and for breeders. What are some advantages of the Intellimate system that we have? Well, one of the main advantages and big advantages of it is that you can easily switch between PCAI and conventional dosage. Both PCAI and conventional dosage is set up on the Intellimate gun. It also comes preset for volume settings. But one of the nice things about it is, is that you can actually go in and change the volume and speed settings and lock it. So that way no one else can come in and change it. We also have something really interesting called a pulse flow technology. And what this does is it simulates natural mating. We also see a labor and time savings in the lab, as well as on the south farms. On the south farm side, one of the nice things you see is that you're not having to open bags all the time. You can have one person coming through, putting the catheters in, somebody coming through with the Intellimate gun, and one person pulling the catheters out. So you see a huge time savings in this. We also have easy to follow cleaning protocols developed specifically for the Intellimate gun, which includes daily, and weekly cleaning protocols. What's nice is that you can have a consistent concentration, volume, and motility from dose one to 2,000. So with the bulk bag, you're not having to worry about agitating it all the time because it's in your backpack, and as you're walking, it's agitating it. And we have also done studies to show we have the volume concentration motility is the same from the first dose to the very last dose. So what I'm gonna show you guys now is a video showing how easy the Intellimate gun works. What does our kit include when you purchase it? And all of this stuff we have so that you can purchase separately as well if you want to. But what we've done is made it into a kit so that you can use it. So the question is that we get sometimes is what happens after the sale? Well, one of the things is we don't just forget about you after the sale. We can come out and train you on the use of the Intellimate gun, as well as all the proper cleaning protocols. We also service all the equipment as well. So if you're having an issue with the Intellimate gun, one of the things we do is we'll send you a loaner gun out. 
you'll send us your IntelliMate gun back and we'll work on it. But one of the things we also do for biosecurity purposes is that we will leave it on one side under UV light for 24 hours. We'll flip it to the other side, use it under UV light for another 24 hours before we even go in and service the guns. There is also a one-year warranty on the dosing guns. We also carry all the replacement parts that you're gonna need for the guns. So that was a little bit about our IntelliMate bulk dosing system that we have for you guys. One of the things that we do, we tried to revolutionize it, make it easy for the bulk dosing bags, make it easier for the operator and make it easy for the South Farm. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in and, and learning more about our IntelliMate gun. One of the things I'd like to leave you guys with is this is my contact information. Again, my, my name is Chris Landsman and I am the regional sales rep for GenePro. I'd like to thank you guys for taking the time to learn about GenePro and more about our IntelliMate gun. And I'd like to answer any questions that you guys may have. Thanks. Well, Chris, thanks for that information. And let's get to those questions. Producers, again, you know the drill. Just drop your questions in the QA box and Chris and I will dive into those questions uh, and, and find out what the answers are here from uh, Gene Pro on, on this system. So our first producer question, Chris, is what does it take to switch from another AI delivery system to Gene Pro? And can two systems be used in the same pig system? You know, going between two different systems, you should be able to use um, to switch between another. We'd have to look and see on two beat in the bags how everything um, adapts to it and how our adapter and everything. Um, and using two systems in one, you should be no problem. Great. Okay. I also have a question about all the products that go along with the IntelliMate. Um, you had the list there of every, everything that comes in the package. Are there some other products that go along with that? That was a lot in, in that bundle. Yeah, we do have the kit that goes along with it. Um, but like I said, at one of the things at Gene Pro, we have supplies all the way from the bore stud all the way through the South Farm. So catheters and that type of stuff we have. Um, but anything to do with reproductive on, this, on the swine side, we carry everything to do with that. So Great. And producers, remember, drop those questions in the QA box and we will get those answered for you. I do have a question, Chris, about um, converting between traditional AI and PCAI uh, on the gun. Tell me about that conversion process and, and what that would take. Well, really it's, it's as simple as hitting a button on the gun. So we have built into the gun, we have PCAI and then we have the traditional AI. So as you're going through, if you want a certain sow to be conventional AI, it's just a flip of a button on, on the gun. You go to traditional and then you can flip it back to uh, PCAI. So it's that simple. And one of the things I thought was interesting too was the staffing that you talked about. So go into that a little bit more and explain exactly how that process works um, with the, the labor that it would take uh, through this AI process. Sure, one of the ways that we've had a lot of guys using this is as they're going through, they have one guy going, person going through and putting the catheters in the sows. They have another person coming by a few minutes later and actually going through with the IntelliMate gun, going through the process with it and moving on to the next one. And then someone coming through afterward and pulling the catheters out. So really you cut down on your labor because you're not waiting for that sow to take down the, um, semen like you normally would. This automatically goes in. It's got a natural um, pulse technology with it that simulates it, but we're able to get that in there in a lot less time. Great. What, uh, what's the last word you want producers to, to be left with on, on today's show? Well, I think if you're interested in our IntelliMate system or in anything that we might offer. Like I said, we have a full range of products from our eye sperm to looking at sperm to catheters and things like that. We'd love to give you guys a quote or talk to you guys more about our information. And you can reach me at 712-579-0254. Uh, Chris, I'm going to ask you for that phone number one more time. You betcha. It's a uh, 712-579-0254.
Great. Thanks, Chris Landsman. We really appreciate you being with us today on behalf of Gene Pro. And as always, we appreciate your support of our producers here in Iowa, uh, as well as Iowa Pork Congress and being an Iowa Pork Alliance member. Wow, how was that for some great information in a short amount of time? This was our second Swine Product show Spotlight. We will be back with more Swine Product Spotlights tomorrow, 9.30 and 2.30, where we'll talk with AP, DP Tech Link, Once Inc, Tech Mix, and Pig Easy over those two time periods. You know, here's some information as well that I think is really important as, as we begin to wrap up. The Iowa Pork Producers Association works year round on behalf of our producers, promoting, educating, and providing a leading voice for a sustainable, socially responsible, and globally competitive pork industry. What is most important though, is what you do on your farm each and every day. Here's a few facts about Iowa pork as we start to wrap up. Iowa has 24.8 million hogs, making it the leading state in the nation in pork production. Those pigs are raised on 5,418 hog farms. 147,105 jobs are created by the Iowa pork industry. There is $11.9 billion in value-added activity because of the Iowa pork industry, $40.8 billion in pork production and processing sales, and get this, $6.8 billion in household income or the total payroll that's related to the Iowa pork production. And nearly a quarter of Iowa's corn and soybean acres are used to feed Iowa's pigs. The point I'm trying to make is this, what you do each and every day on your farms makes a difference and we appreciate and applaud what you do. This evening, you'll want to tune in to the Iowa Port Congress seminar that starts at seven o'clock. Tonight's session is titled, How the Swine Community Met COVID Challenges. Speakers include Colin Johnson with Iowa State. He'll moderate the session. Lucia Hunt with the Minnesota Department of Ag, and she'll be talking about centralized grinding and composting sites. Sarah Crawford with the National Pork Board. She'll talk about some depopulation field trials. And Nick Gabler with Iowa State will cover diet management for slower growth. Now you need to register for this seminar, but it's easy to do at iowapork.org. Again, just log on to iowapork.org. Be sure to register for the seminar tomorrow as well. It is Protecting Your Livelihood, Farm and Facility Security. Hannah Thompson Weeman with the Animal Ag Alliance will present that information at 7 a.m. And again, be sure to register for that as well, 7 a.m. We want to remind you that Iowa Pork Foundation Scholarship Auction, Dollars for Swine Scholars, is happening online right now through Thursday evening, tomorrow evening at 8 p.m. The auction funds scholarships to support future professionals in the pork industry. Last year, the auction funded 23 scholarships. Help us support our youth through scholarships by supporting the auction. There are great items and opportunities for cash donations as well. For more information, just go to the iowapork.org website and look for Dollars for Swine Scholars link. You can buy as many items as you want on that auction. Your dollars will make a difference for those students. And to connect with all the activities during the 49th Annual Iowa Pork Congress, just log on to the Iowa Pork Producers Association website at iowapork.org. Again, I've said that website several times, but just in case, it's iowapork.org. And if you'd like to follow along on social media, be sure to check out the hashtag Iowa Pork Congress 2021. Again, that hashtag is Iowa Pork Congress 2021. Thanks for being with us this afternoon, and we look forward to seeing you throughout the day and right back here tomorrow at 930 for Swine Product Spotlight number three. For the Iowa Pork Congress, I'm Cindy Cunningham. Enjoy your day.